This segment that I am about to share with you is something very personal to me. I was brought into the stock market world from a very different angle compared to the normal people. I've seen things that 95% of the general population have not. The stock market is the dirtiest business place on earth. So dirty that when aliens come to visit us, they will never dare to colonize our land. So dirty that even if we give ourselves to the aliens, they'll die from moral poisoning. I've experienced how millions of dollars would come into my hands and how those millions would vanish almost instantaneously. I have seen how a few individuals can break the whole stock market. So, Enqua used their families, friends, business associates and companies, controlling a total of 189 accounts in their names. And these accounts were used to artificially inflate the share prices of three listed companies, Bluemont Group Limited, Asia Suns Capital Limited and Lion Gold Corp Limited collectively known as BAL. This led to BAL share prices rocketing up to almost 550% over 10 to 14 months. Then, in a matter of just two days, they plummeted by between 82 and 94%. This case was then known as Singapore's largest penny stock crash, where 8 billion Singapore dollars got wiped off the market in less than two trading days. Just a few years back, I had a close friend who got charged with Singapore's first case of stock market front running. And today, he is behind bars. In a landmark case, three financial traders who ran an illegal front running arrangement have been sentenced to jail terms ranging from 20 months to three years. Front running refers to making a trade before a large non publicized order from the trading company to gain an advantage. I have gained the world and also lost everything you can ever imagine because of the stock market. If you want to hear my story, we would need to go back in time to the year 2006, where it all started. Back then, the society that I lived in was prospering left, right and centre. Buy a stock on Monday, and on Friday, you'll become that millionaire who buys drinks for everyone at the bar. Everyone's finances grew too fast, too quickly. People with primary school education could enjoy living in mansions. People without proper business training could become big bosses. As for me, I wanted a piece of that pie as well. So I went into internet forums to learn from people who are already experts in the stock market. I then found myself this guy who was coincidentally also a stockbroker. We became friends and I found out that he was earning pretty decently from trading the stock market. He told me that he made use of technical analysis to earn from his trades. When I asked him how he did it, he would never reveal the secret to his Kung Fu because according to him, even the Shaolin monk needs to carry water from the well and to the temple for two years every day before the Shaolin master would even consider to reveal a tiny piece of the Kung Fu secret to his disciple. F*** off. So I took things into my own hands. I went for technical analysis courses and burned around $10,000 learning nonsense from people who claimed to be gods of the stock market. So one day, Mr. Shaolin Master called me and gave me a big tip. He told me that I should buy a put warrant where if the index drops, I'll profit. This caused me to lose around 70% of my bank roll. I was young, stupid, impressionable, and I thought this guy was the messiah. In the years to come, he got into trouble and was jailed for Singapore's first case of front running where he collaborated with two other guys from some hedge fund. Before they placed a trade, Mr. Shaolin Master would place the trade first so that when the hedge fund fires their cannons, the Shaolin Master stock would immediately become profitable. Technical analysis, my ass, it was all a con job. 
if he gave me genuine advice from the start or if he had genuine top-class technical analysis skills from the start then sure i'll swallow the loss and move on like a man but nope he did no different from betting on red while the roulette wheel was spinning and he preached me into the red as well after that I was determined to become the Shaolin master myself. I started to dive deep into understanding the market, understanding what its technical analysis all about. It was hard. You need capital to game the market. Those internet guys who tell you that you can earn a living with a few thousand dollars, this is a lie. You can never earn a living with just a few thousand dollars trading the stock market, especially if you are doing day trading. This is just to capture your attention in hope to sell you a more expensive course in the days to come or in hope that you can become their faithful follower. I was surviving pretty decently for quite some time, but it was never the million dollar dream that I hoped for. One day, someone I was very, very close to came to tell me that he had access to knowing who is going to buy up shares before it actually happens and he told me that I could make a few hundred thousand from this very easily. Mind you, he is a very trusted friend, someone that I may even consider blocking a bullet for. I was invited to one of their party sessions. When my friend sent me the address, I saw that the location was at one of the most prestigious karaoke joints. I drove over, parked my car, took the elevator and walked towards the room. While I was walking, I was greeted with expensive looking chandeliers, artworks and furnitures. When I arrived, a waiter opened the door for me and immediately I was welcomed with a choice of champagne, hot liquor and beer. With the usual Mandarin KTV music played in the background, I see people mostly dressed in long sleeve formal wear drinking with their friends and pretty looking Chinese girls. After letting the waiter know my choice of poison, a handful of girls started to surround me as if asking to be picked for the night. After engaging in a 3 minute conversation with one of them, the rest just walked away in hope to find their new target. Not long later, my friend walked in. He took an empty glass poured some beer for himself and started chasing the more elder looking individuals. When he was done with his obligations, he slumped into the couch beside me and casually signaled for me to drink up together with him. As I was beginning to get used to the environment, suddenly someone asked the waiter to cut the music and play some crazy techno music in the background instead. The door swung open and a man who appears to be around 50 years old walked in. The girls, at the speed of light, left their seats and surrounded him. Then, they started to dance to the music. They held hands, went into a circular formation and started dancing in a merry-go-round manner to the tune of the techno beat. As I saw whatever that was unfolding before my eyes, this was when I truly understood the power of money. I saw how money can literally make people go round and round. As the music dies down, and when they were done with their grand entrance, this big boss would scan the room to see who was present. He would then get his assistant to walk behind him and he would go to every individual to pass them a cigar. When it was my turn, he signaled to his assistant to open the rustic looking box. The boss took out a majestic looking cigar and gave it to me. I told him that I do not want the cigar because I don't smoke. But he looked into my eyes with that charming, sincere innocence and said, It's okay. Don't worry. Have a go at this piece of art. When you smoke cigar, you don't have to inhale the smoke. Just let it linger in your mouth and compliment it with this glass of Macallan 18 years. You are going to enjoy it. 
I mean, damn it, how could anyone say no to that? I felt like I was being serviced like a king by the king himself. As I put the cigar into my mouth, he even inched forward to give me a light. At that point, it felt like you could just do anything for this man. It felt like you owed him your whole life. You're here to make millions and you're being serviced like a millionaire even before the millions come. This was in fact one of the greatest nights in my entire life. The next day, my friend asked me to buy shares from a company that was into some energy play. He said that if I was still unsure, he could give me evidence. At 3pm, he said, there will be 3,000 lots that would be purchased. This is equivalent to around $7 million. When the clock struck 3, I waited. Nothing happened. I gave it some time, but still nothing happened. Then suddenly, at 3.05pm, there were big purchases made. 400 lots were bought up. 600 lots were taken up, 1,000 lots, then another 1,000 lots were bought up as well, totaling to 3,000 lots. That was when I realized that I was with a gang of powerful people who knows how to predict the future. Sign me up, I want in. Almost immediately, I was given another tip. I bought into that counter without thinking twice, but I ended up losing around $30,000. My friend reprimanded me for letting go of the stock too early. He said that they were still in the midst of making magic happen. He then convinced me to buy into another counter and I did. But the same thing happened. I suffered a similar loss amount just like my previous trade. But why would I sell my shares away when I was given the assurance by someone who was like a brother to me. Why would I sell when the big boss spends $30,000 every night partying? If he can earn money like that, I want to be like him and also I trust his insights. But this time, I held onto the stock until I was really hurt. So hurt that I ended up losing $100,000 in hard, cold cash. I was devastated. And this is why I am here revealing the truth to you. I want to make my losses worthwhile and also at the same time, I want to teach people about what the stock market is really like. Don't be like me. <laughs> this whole thing was an elaborate scam. It was a scam to cheat the public's money and to fool the local authorities. The boss's goal was to grow those chosen stocks to a level where the big boys cannot resist but to buy over the whole company. But during the process of getting there, the boss and his group of manipulators needed money. The cash could come from bank loans. It could also come from people holding on to a lot of black money. But most of all, for this to really, really work, it needs to come from retail investors. During the journey in artificially inflating the share prices towards outer space, the manipulators would also try to take profit. When they take profit, most of the retail investors with shallow pockets would be carried out and experience a total wipeout of their money. And worst, their family's money. This is why the stock market is so dirty. You don't have true friends. They need to kill you in order to profit. I would rather go to the casino the only thing I need to kill is the table. And if I am there with a friend, we are definitely going to be on the same page. I know, some of you may say that my stories were rare happenings that would not fall upon the general population. That is not true. Stock market manipulation happens every day. What the general population do not experience is taking the front seat like I did. Do you know that manipulators churn trading volume using different brokers just to cause the stock to be in the limelight so that retail investors and hedge fund managers would notice and eventually take a position? Do you know that manipulators would strike a deal with research houses so that they could produce a buy call for stocks that they are manipulating? This would earn the confidence of the public and then they would proceed to make an actual purchase that the manipulators would eventually take profit on. Do you know that manipulators are friends with the CEOs of the stocks they are manipulating? 
CEOs have access to a registry stating who bought how many shares into the company. Manipulators would then use this information to further charm the shareholders for their own personal gains. Do you know that manipulators would carry insider information about the stocks and then share this information to the victims so that they could earn their trust? For example, company ABC is trying to get a deal with a mine in Malaysia. But before this news appears in the newspapers, these victims already knew it because the manipulators carried the first-hand news to them and these victims thought that they were really in the front line of things and therefore they trust the manipulators. Do you know that manipulators would place buy orders in the market first without the real intention of buying so that it looks like the interest of the stock is extremely high? Okay, well look, all these are micro matters. Let's check out the bigger picture. Fed plans $107 billion worth of purchases in a single day. That breaks down into $75 billion of treasuries and $32 billion of mortgages. Here's what he said to me yesterday in an interview. He said we should go day by day and everything should be on the table for things that we think will help stabilize financial markets. All right, let's get to the markets now. Our U.S. markets falling overnight, but Dow and S&P futures surging today off the backs of the Fed, unleashing infinity QE. What does it mean for Main Street? Well, the idea here is, yes, a lot of this is financial engineering, and a lot of those people who are looking at this are probably saying, why is the Federal Reserve getting into these corporate bonds in the first place? When a subprime crash happened in 2008, the Federal Reserve stepped in to bail out the affected organizations. They coined this thing called quantitative easing, which in short, it means printing money to solve whatever problems brought in by the subprime crisis to the best of their abilities. At that time, it kind of made a little sense. You cannot allow financial institutions to go bust. People's hard-earned money would literally vanish. Where are they going to find cash to feed themselves? But when COVID hit, the Dow Jones Industrial Index dropped by more than 10,000 points over a period of one and a half months. The government stepped in to say that they'll throw an unlimited QE to save the market, which means they can print as much money as they want to give support to American businesses for an unlimited amount of time. From that day onward, the market has been acting senselessly. This is the biggest manipulation in the history of mankind. Problem is this, when we game the market, we want fair ground. If we play on an unfair ground, it is like you going to the casino to play blackjack only that it is rigged for you to lose. No matter how good you are at counting cards, it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, that's fine. Because if I lose money, it'll go to someone else in the market who is smarter and sharper than me, right? See, I can play poker. But if I suck, and if I lose, and the money goes to someone else, then it's my problem. So be it. But the issue here is this, who are you actually playing the market with? Who are you actually playing poker with? According to an article written by Alicia J. Davis from the University of Michigan Law School, she stated that today, retail investors own less than 30% and represent a very small percentage of US trading volume. Data on the overall level of trading in the US equity markets are not available, but recent New York Stock Exchange data reveal that trades by individual investors represent on average less than 2% of the New York Stock Exchange trading volume. Mind you, this was written in the year 2009. Just imagine what is really happening today. This is 12 years later. The truth is, the stock market is a big poker table for the really rich corporations. When you think of corporations, you think of a vast amount of people. That's not true. Those who make high-level decisions to purchase hundreds of millions of dollars worth of equities merely come from a few people at the top. So really, you are using your blood, sweat, tears, time, effort, life, and savings to fight with someone with unlimited 
amount of money. Again, I say, in the stock market, in order for someone to win, someone else needs to lose. You can never change this principle. There are five main takeaways here. One, if you see someone prospering too much, too quickly, way above the average, beware. These people may want to sell you their secret recipe, but truth is, there is no secret recipe. It was either they were bloody lucky or they were into some shady sh Two, becoming wealthy from the stock market requires a big sum of capital. Let's do some sensible comparisons and calculations here. If you put your money in the following fixed deposit schemes, this is what you will get in return. For DBS Bank, it's a 1.8% per annum return. Maybank, it's a 1% per annum return. Hongleong Finance, 0.65%. ICBC Bank, 0.6%. UOB Bank, 0.5%. OCBC Bank, 0.45%. If you take the highest per annum return, which is 1.8%, and assuming you place $10,000 into that fixed deposit scheme, you will profit 15 pathetic dollars per month. Let's say you are able to perform 20 times better than the bank and get a 36% per annum return. This equates to you earning $300 per month. This sum of money is grossly below the average salary of a normal human being in my locality. Alright, for the sake of illustration, let's assume you can perform 200 times better than the bank with the same $10,000 capital your profit will be $3,000 per month. This return of investment still does not beat you getting a day job. Do you know that Singapore's median income in 2019 was $4,563? And after CPF deductions, it is only $3,331. You could apply for a job and be guaranteed a stable income without risking a single cent of your hard-earned money. But why go into the market and start risking your capital. Averagely, hedge funds earned their clients around 20% returns for the year 2020. Assuming that you can do better than these fund managers and come back with a 40% per annum returns, you'll be seeing $333.33 per month with 10,000 Singapore dollars as the capital. Meaning, if you want to earn the average Singaporean income of $4,563, you'll need a capital of $136,891. That's not money that any average person can cough up with in a short period of time. This is also an assumption that you do not experience a losing month, which is usually not possible. Because who can be so perfect in trading? Why would a person choose to put $136,000 at risk for a normal return when they could have a risk-free engagement with an employer for the same amount? What if you want $10,000 per month? You'll have to cough up around $300,000 to get there flawlessly for 8.3 years without spending a single cent of your profit. You'll need tens of millions of dollars to become wealthy in the market. But if I already have tens of millions of dollars, why would I put them at risk? Which brings me to my next point. Number three, you can make a living from day trading, but the returns are not as lucrative as advertised by some market gurus. Market gurus have to talk like that so that they can sell you their courses. How are you, sir? We'd just like to ask you about why you don't want to fly commercial. Why have you said that you won't fly commercial? You said that it's like getting into a tube with a bunch of demons. Why do you think well, that? No, no, listen to me just a second. Of course. Not the people. The main reason is because of the need. If, if I flew commercial, I'd have to stop 65% of what I'm doing. That's really the main. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercial so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, I paid. <laughs> you kind of caught me off guard here, okay? But we cannot be naive. We need to stop being naive. 
we cannot take everything people say on face value. We need to do our own due diligence. You hear them talking about how profitable their businesses are, but have you seen their accounts? You see retail chain outlets springing up everywhere, but do you know if they are severely in debt? You see that stock market gurus on YouTube driving Porsche cars and throwing money around like nobody's business, but do you know their actual source of income? Answer is you don't, and you may never even know. Point number four, we can still ultimately profit from the market, but it has to be on a mid to long term basis. Even so, the risk of you losing your capital is still high. It is said that if you long the index and keep it for 10 years, you will more than likely earn money. That's true in general because the market has been on an uptrend for the past 40 years. On the other hand, who is to say that things would never change? Number 5. Trying to win in the stock market is like you playing a game of rigged poker with some very powerful people that could change the rules however and whenever they want. Look at me, I saw someone doing well but they were cheating the market. I saw how a group of people predicted several counters to grow and it even grew 550% but they were merely cheating the public's money. When you decide to take up this challenge, you are playing cards with a bunch of people who are a gazillion times more powerful than you. Don't just listen to successful people preach. Having $10 million in their account does not mean that they are all knowledgeable, all wise, all good. We live in a society where we judge people based on their material possessions which is why Ponzi scheme leaders would always need to carry a Mont Blanc pen in their pockets, drive expensive cars around, be dressed in tailored suits and flash their money wherever they go so that people can be conned. Don't be foolish and fall into this trap. Look, I lost my life to learn this lesson and I'm giving it to you now for free. You do not need to buy any courses from me, you do not need to donate anything to me, and you do not need to invest into any of my schemes. Today, from the bottom of my heart, I can only hope that you'll treasure this. Use it. Keep yourself and your family safe.